I've worked a lot using sort of a reproductive justice approach, but more specifically in theory terms, using critical race and critical feminist theory to bring an intersectional examination of reproductive rights and justice issues. So highlighting and trying to move the movement um, to show, illustrate the ways in which it's not just about abortion and it's not just about access for middle-class white women, um, that there are many different people being impacted in different ways from the same types of ideologies. Some of my work is geared directly towards advocates, um, policy and legal advocates as well. So what we know is that those advocates are working really, really hard and they don't necessarily have the time to stop and say, this is the big picture, right? Or this is where I think things are going. And so that's where scholars are really useful because that's what we're paid to do. And that's what we like doing. I work, like, when I say I, I, I work from critical race and critical feminist theory, um, that's sort of my primary touchstone but I borrow and learn from many sources of feminist work and I think that's the strength of the Feminist Research Institute as well is that it sort of provides a home for many different feminist visions. Um, and I think that feminist theory and feminism in particular, its strength is that it's not a totalizing view. It doesn't purport to have sort of one approach or one way of thinking about everything, but it's a sort of a collective way of thinking that's built on interaction um, and change. I had a conversation with the great disability rights and feminist scholar Adrienne Ash mm. about this once and I actually agree with her that she said even if we reach sort of the reproductive justice utopia we would still for example need abortion mm -hmm. um, and so um, I mean, I guess the utopia I would envision is one that's encompassed by the definition of reproductive justice, that we will have reproductive justice when every person has sort of all the means necessary to make a self-determining decision, right, on behalf of themselves. Um, so, and that includes things like access to education, <coughs> safe neighborhoods, um, environmental justice, you know, drawing from all those different parts of the movement. It's not a question for one person. Um, it's about sort of how do we come, what processes do we need to build to create a decision-making structure that's truly participatory.